Hi everyone, I'm Han Bing from UB. Today, I want to introduce our remote business world. We have a phone, a software-defined tool using 3D printing and smartphones for personalized home-based rehabilitation. Stroke is the fifth largest cause of death and the leading cause of long-term motor disability in the United States. And there are about 7 million survivals of stroke reside in the United States. Stroke can lead to diminished upper limb function, restriction in performing daily activities, and reduced quality of life. Survivals of stroke require continuing therapy. Effective rehabilitation program can include individualized program, engaging task-oriented activities, and target practice. But it is all about inpatient rehabilitation. After returning home, stroke survivors are required to conduct in-home rehabilitation that may continue for two to nine weeks. The general approach for in-home rehabilitation include exercises using an elastic tubing band, which has been clinically proved to augment functional ability and reduce disability. However, current in-home rehabilitation approaches can suffer from a lot of limitations. The first is not scalable. The degree of motor disabilities limits the use of these bands. A severely affected stroke patient, for example, may not even be able to adapt to the resistance offered by the band. The second is not usable. Statistics show that excesses that mimic daily living activities are more meaningful and produce significantly good outcomes. Well, elastic band excesses are boring and cannot achieve the same goal. The third is zero access feedback. The objective feedback serves to inform stroke survivors of their progress better and actively engage them in their rehabilitation. Those encouraging self-management of rehabilitation while well, elastic band excesses cannot achieve this goal. So we expect a rehabilitation tool to meet four needs. First, a rehab tool should be easier to use. Second, a rehab tool can address multi-level needs for rehabilitation. Third, a tool should be able to calculate excess efficacy, thus encouraging self-management of rehabilitation. Last but not least, a rehab tool is expected to be low cost to satisfy most people. Considering these requirements mentioned, in this paper we produce Rehab Phone, a software-defined smartphone-based application. Our idea comes from the fact that stroke survivors are expected to mimic daily life activity, for example, opening the door, inputting the password, and pouring the water, in order to help them regain their skills. So, how Rehabophone is expected to work? We expected a rehabilitation object is directly coupled with the user's smartphone, which allows the user to mimic daily life activity for rehabilitation. Meanwhile, smartphone measures the rehabilitation efficacy. To achieve this goal, there are three challenges to consider. The first is to uniquely match the physiological need of each individual. For this purpose, we collaborate with rehabilitation professionals to design certain activities. And each activity has a specific rehabilitation goal. Rehab form then maps a given rehabilitation goal to predefined G code, a language for 3D printing. This G code can produce request rehabilitation objects with commercial 3D printers. The smartphone combines printing the rehabilitation objects in a way that allows stroke survival to mimic daily life activities, meanwhile measuring the behaviors. 
The second challenge is to enable the self-management based on the rehab performance. For this challenge, we leverage smartphone-based sensing to enable real-time activity recognition and rehab efficacy calculation. For example, we leverage the accelerometer to measure if an excess involves translational motion or gyroscope if it involves rotational movement. For each excess, we adopt a threshold-based algorithm to calculate the efficacy of rehabilitation, including number of reputations, duration, and smoothness. The third challenge is to timely provide objective and encouraging feedback. For this challenge, we implement a stroke rehabilitation manager to manage the data collection, data analysis, as well as exchange of information in the smartphone. In this figure, arrows signify the information passing flow. Smartphone UI provides real-time feedback. Data is uploaded to Amazon Cloud Server at the end of each day to allow the therapist to monitor the rehabilitation remotely. Now, let's look at our implementation of rehab phone. First is the software part. We develop a mobile app to tune the in-home rehabilitation into a more interactive and informatical diagram. The app has a very neat UI that can guide the user through the rehab process. It contains a list of daily activities and let the user select the rehab preference, such as intensity. Afterward, we leverage the onboard sensor to trick the motion and give time feedback. Second is the hardware part. These rehabilitation objects produced by commercial 3D printers take less than three hours for fabrication and cost less than $5. Moreover, these objects can be customized based on the rehabilitation goals, hand size, smooth foam size, and user preference. To evaluate the rehab foam, we carry out three studies. There are two in-lab studies exploring the usability and the consistency, and one clinical trial on real stroke survivals. So in the usability study, the goal is to gather possible usability issues. We enroll four older, healthy adults and four stroke survivals. Each participant is asked to perform all 13 activities. After that, a questionnaire is delivered to each participant to receive feedback in the zero, least favorable, to nine, most favorable, like her skill format. Then we made optimization according to the user feedback. For example, to have less distracting audio and visual cues while adding more text, and fine tune the agnostics of a software-defined rehabilitation objects. The goal of consistency study is to validate the consistency of measurements by the system. We enroll 12 young adults. We adopt the coefficient of variation as matrix. On average, most of the exercises show a COV percentage of around 10%, which is considered good enough for human limb motion analysis. Work with MARG exercise is considerably higher than other rehabilitation exercises. Reason is that related gate dynamics will affect the smartphone accelerometer reading. Finally, we conduct a clinical trial on 12 stroke survivals. The total intervention program lasts for six weeks. In the beginning, our occupational therapists access the baseline and do initial training for each participant. The occupational therapists also conduct home visits in the midterm and post-intervention. 
Now, I would like to show you some activity demos that we re record in the midterm assessment. The slow pull, unlock with key, horizontal ball, and a horizontal mark. For all enrolled stroke survivals, we evaluate the use of adherence to our program and rehabilitation efficacy. First, let's talk about user adherence. We define a participant is adhering to the medication if the number of treatments divided by the number of treatments prescribed in a given time period T is greater than 80%. We then define the group adherence as the percentages of the people adhering to our intervention program. This figure shows the results of the user adherence. The bar tells the number of reputations, and the dashed line indicates the threshold of adherence. Participant 1 withdraws our program in the middle term. 10 of the remaining 11 participants are adhering to our program. Second is the results of rehabilitation efficacy. While smartphone-based assessment provides timely feedback, a standard clinical assessment is required to provide a reference for clinical stroke rehabilitation professionals. In this study, we adopt the Wolf Motor Function Test, which is a quantitative index of upper extremity motor disability examinal through the use of time and functional tasks. This table shows a comparison of functional ability between before and after an intervention. Results are re recorded as a total time cost in the Wolf Motor Function Test. One participant withdraws our program the rest of stroke survivals can receive an average 14.5% improvement. The functional ability improves in 8 cases out of 11 cases. Two participants, ID is 5 and 11, improve more than 20%. A 20% is less likely uh, to be due to variability in the performance. During the whole inter-program, approaches including male contact, home visit, as well as an interview with each participant are carried out by our occupational therapists to receive feedback from user. Most of these feedbacks are very positive. After our intervention program, one participant can tie her shoelace, which she is not be able to perform before the intervention. To this end, let me summarize our work. We investigate a 3D printing technology coupling with a smartphone that can achieve in-home stroke rehabilitation. We design and implement rehab phone, a software-defined smartphone-based stroke rehabilitation system. We conduct a clinical trial on stroke survivals to evaluate rehab phone. Thanks for watching.